Hi, this is Melanie from FaithfulLamb.com. Today's blog is dated December 30, 2021, and is titled Man's Sixth Sense. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of the one whom you obey, either slaves of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness or right standing with God? Romans 6, verse 16. Does man have a sixth sense? Are our thoughts, in other words, our mind and feelings, like a sixth sense? At the very least, our thoughts and feelings control our responses to the five senses, sight, hearing, speech, touch, taste. First, let's look at the five senses in God. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, verse 10. We are created in Jesus Christ to perform good works, which God, before time began, ordained or established or ordered by appointment, decree, or law. These are not just words. We know God's word is powerful, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12. God's word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The five senses, sight, hearing, speech, touch, taste. Sight and hearing. But blessed, spiritually aware, and favored by God are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Matthew 13, verse 16. Our eyes and ears are blessed by God because we see his blessings in our lives every day and hear and understand his word, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son who died, was resurrected, and now sits at God the Father's right hand. Sight, Matthew 6, verse 22. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. But if your eye is bad, spiritually blind, your whole body will be full of darkness. If our spiritual eye is focused on God, then our bodies will be full of light and will shine with God's word for all to see. If our spiritual eye is focused on darkness, our bodies will be full of darkness. Hearing. So be be careful how you listen. For whoever has a teachable heart, to him more understanding will be given. And whoever does not have a longing for truth, even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him. Luke 8, verse 18. Listen to God's word. Hear it with your ears. Understand it with your hearts and minds. Do not be like Cain, who knew God's word, but was a poser, a pretender. He pretended to be righteous, thinking he could climb into the kingdom of heaven through a window to receive God's blessings instead of coming through the door as instructed. Speech or words. So we know God's word is alive, and we also know that our very own words are alive. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet and delightful to the soul and healing to the body. Proverbs 16, verse 24. If pleasant words cause healing, then harsh words are certainly the opposite and cause sickness and death. Also, Matthew 12, verse 37, For by your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin, and by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. By your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus tells us that if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can tell, speak to, a mountain to move, and it will move. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 17, verse 20. These are powerful words. Our words are alive. And and is it no wonder? Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. We are gods who can create by speaking, thinking about, and acting upon God's word, which in turn will cause our own words, thoughts, and actions to create for the greater good of all mankind. 
Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Similar to what Jesus said, live by the sword, die by the sword, except, more appropriately, sting men with your tongue, and you will be stung in the same way, with men's tongues or words, or do unto others as you would have done unto you. Touch or feeling, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. So come out from among unbelievers and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. Come out, repent, turn away from sin. Do not touch what is unclean, turn to Jesus Christ. Stay away from unrighteousness, fornication, lying, adultery, murder, stealing, lust of the flesh, all forms of wickedness and abominations to God. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Numbers 16, verse 27. Touch nothing of the wicked, unless you be consumed in their sins. Taste. O oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste the power of God's word and take refuge in him and be blessed. Man's sixth sense, thoughts and feelings. Our thoughts, words, and actions are the most powerful tools God gave us in Jesus Christ because with them we create the world around us. I know people will say, but thoughts and feelings are not really a sense, are they? Not like seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and speaking. Are not the original five senses all operations of our minds? We touch something in our minds, our feelings, thoughts, tell us what it is and how to react. Same with the other senses. So in essence, our thoughts and feelings are the greatest operation of our minds. You could say our feelings or thoughts are a sense, sixth sense of who we are inside our hearts. Thus, thought is the greatest operation of our minds of all the five senses. We think all day long, day and night, even in our dreams. The kinds of thoughts we have are based on what we have stored in our hearts and determine how we, re we react to the other five senses, taste, touch, sight, hearing, and speech. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of the one whom you obey? either slaves of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness, right standing with God. Romans 6, verse 16.